Hi folks, this is Jesse Randall. We're out here at the farm. I'm the ISU Extension Forester and we've had a lot of calls recently. Uh, it's spring and uh, the calls have come in concerning non-timber forest products and specifically how do we go about as a beginner mushroom grower? And you know that's something I knew very little about and I started reading and I wanted to bring you this short little video. Uh, I called some folks uh, around the Midwest and they were generous enough. They sent me some spawn and, and for those like myself before who didn't really have any clue about mushrooms, spawn are the fungal uh, growths that will inoculate a log and grow into the mushrooms we want. And so according to, to the instructions in the literature, they, they're looking for a certain species of log and, and every mushroom kind of has its preferred host and the shiitake mushrooms that we're going to to grow here over the next several years and we'll bring you updated videos over those next several years those really prefer white oak and red oak logs in that three to six inch diameter range all right and and logs that are comfortable to lift because you're going to have to move these around we didn't have easy access to red and white oak bolts of, of logs, uh, but what we did have, and, and, and I think a lot of people here in the Midwest have, are ironwood logs. And so we went out, we cut down some ironwood during our normal TSI early spring. The sap was rising in those trees. The, the leaves were just starting to come out. So there's really good sugar content. There's really good moisture content in these logs. They were cut about a week ago. They were left uh, in an area where they weren't going to dry out. They were not in contact with the soil, so we didn't have a lot of native uh, soil-borne fungi invading into that, that uh, wood material. And so that's trick number one. When you cut these trees, keep them up off the ground, keep them wet, uh, and, and try not to let them get inoculated with natural fungi. We want to inoculate them with shiitake fungi. So just to give you an idea of what these look like, I went the easy route and I got these, this bag of shiitake uh, spawn. And what you're looking for, uh, you see these are, are dowels and that white material are the, the mycelium starting to, to grow. And what, we're, what we need to do is somehow get this mycelium into our host log, all right? And over the course of about eight years, those mycelium uh, will form a mat. And then what they're going to do is in the spring, when the temperature and moisture is right, these logs are gonna fruit for about two weeks. And then they're gonna go dormant until the fall when we have those cooler temperatures. And in eight years, there will virtually be nothing left of this log. Uh, the, the mushrooms will have decayed that log. It'll be really light and it'll be time to make new logs. Now, if we want to force this, this log to, to fruit mushrooms, and it's the middle of the summer when they normally are not fruiting, what I would do is take an old stock tank or a kid's swimming pool. I would dunk these logs that have the spawn in them. I would dunk them in that pool for about 24 hours, pull them out, and in two weeks, I'll have mushrooms. Now, from a raw log with new spawn that we're gonna introduce into a log, I'm looking at a one-year incubation period, if you will, while the spawn forms those mycelial mats, they begin to grow before we ever get a mushroom off of this log. So this video is just the start. We're gonna show you how to inoculate logs and, and from there, what we're gonna do is then show you how they're stored for that first year. And we'll talk about that in a second video. So right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill holes that match the size and depth of these wood plugs, and we're gonna inoculate some logs. So what they have, um, when, you, when you can buy your, your spawn, you can also buy, uh, and I would recommend it, a drill bit that is, is uh, mated to your high-speed angle grinder. Most homeowners are going to start off with a cordless drill or a, or a corded drill, and they're going to sit there and for um, several hours they're going to be drilling holes in these logs and they're going to get tired. You're going to 
break some drill bits as they get dull. This thing uh, requires some, some uh, careful use. Uh, it's impressive in how it drills holes. Big thing is you got to set your stop on this so it, it will actually stop it or it'll drill right straight through your log. So uh, what I'm looking to do is make a grid pattern on this log. I'm going to drill a hole every six inches in a line. I'm going to rotate that log and then I'm going to move over and drill some more holes. So let's quick drill a few holes. Uh, I'm going to put my, my ear protection on right now. I'm wearing glasses that are safety glasses. So again, when, when you're using power equipment, read and follow all the instructions. Make sure you wear your, your personal protective gear. It's going to get a little loud um, while we do this. Mm -hmm. 